everyone and welcome. Um, my name is Amy. Today I'm going to talk through the first part of a multi-part introduction to Stata workshop um, that was developed by me and my collaborator Rebecca Gleit um, to kind of give you an overview of how to um, manipulate and work with data in Stata. This uh, workshop will have several parts um, and it, you can also follow along with the activities by clicking on the document that is in the link in, um, in the video description. So like I said, this workshop has multiple parts. Um, the first part, which is this video, is going to talk about data organization or how data are stored and organized in Stata. And then the second part, which will be another video, we'll talk about data manipulation, which is what you're actually doing when you're working with data and Stata. And then finally, there'll be a self-directed portion um, where you can kind of get your hands dirty and play around with some data in Stata and sort of practice uh, what you would be doing with um, actual data analysis. So let's get started talking about data organization. Stata has a very specific file format for data that it uses. Um, it's called a DTA file. And if you were to locate one on your computer, um, you would see the file extension here, DTA. Throughout this workshop, I'm gonna be talking about the data set friends.dta, um, which Rebecca and I put together by surveying some friends. Um, and this will give you a sort of small but manageable example of what data look like in Stata. So if we were to open this DTA file, what would we see? So this is what data actually look like in Stata. And it's important to note the matrix-like structure of data, of survey data in particular. Um, so we, what we want to pay attention to are the different columns and the different rows. So let's start with the different rows. So each row represents a different person. And what we had people do uh, was take a survey that asked several questions. And what this data shows us is people's answers to those questions. Um, and this is pretty similar to broader survey research if you were to analyze bigger data sets, um, but this is just a smaller version. So each row represents a different person. And then each column represents their answers to a question that we asked them. Right? So the first column here, which we've called major, here we can see each person's answer to what their college major was. Uh, Rebecca and I are in the sociology department, so we can have a lot of friends who are sociology majors. Um, but you can see here someone could type in whatever they wanted uh, to say about their major. What this column is called in survey research is a variable. And a variable is something that varies for each person in your sample. We have other variables here as well, like year in school. Um, here people could respond depending on what year in school they are. Uh, regions, which is regions of the country where someone lived, number of siblings, and their height. So to summarize, each row is a different person, or sometimes we call this a unit of observation, and each column is called a variable. Okay. And I want you to notice the different colors of each variable in the data. Um, and Stata does this because it's telling us how it's holding on to the information in the data set. And each different type of variable um, has, is stored in a different way by Stata. So let's look at this more closely. Here what I'm going to show you for three different variables is in this black box here, what we see when we look at the data and in this gray box here, how Stata is holding on to the information. What we can see about this variable regions, which is colored in red, is that we're seeing northeast comma west, and Stata is reading that also as northeast comma west. This is an exact match between the way Stata is holding on to the information and what it's showing us. This isn't always the case. So if we look at the variable year in school, we can see that we're seeing the word junior in blue, but Stata is holding on to the number three, right? So Stata is reading this information as a number, but then presenting us with a word. And we're gonna talk a little bit more in a moment um, about what's going on with this type of variable. And then finally, these variables in black are similar to the ones in red, in which we see the number 66, and Stata is holding on to the number 66 as well. So for the variable height and siblings as well, since it's also in black, Whatever we see is what Stata sees as well. 
So these are three different ways that Stata holds on to information um, about variables, and each type of variable has um, a different name. The red variables are called string variables uh, because they represent a string of characters that Stata holds on to. The second is called uh, numeric with labels in that it's a numeric variable because Stata reads it as numbers, but it has word labels that are presented to us. And then the final type of variable um, in black is numeric without labels. So it's numeric in that Stata is holding on to a number, um, but there are no word labels attached to these numbers. So let's summarize these different ways of storing information. So the first is string, and Stata shows this to us in red. Um, and for string variables, data are stored and appear as text. Then we have two different types of numeric variables. The first is numeric with labels, which Stata shows us in blue. And this is where data appear to be text, but are actually stored in the computer as numbers. And then finally, we have numeric variables without labels, where data are stored in the computer as numbers, and they appear to us as numbers as well. So I want you to take a moment, and you can follow along on the worksheet that's linked below if you want, um, but take a moment to determine the type of variable for each of the variables here in this mini data set. So hopefully you were able to categorize each of the variables according to uh, their type or how Stata holds on to the information. And what I've done here is I've pulled up the friends data file in Stata to give you a little preview of what the data look like in Stata. And specifically, I want to spend a little bit more time talking about these numeric variables with labels. So let's turn our, our attention to this variable year in school. As we know already, what Stata understands as the number three is presented to us as junior. And if we click around through values of this variable, we can get a better sense of how these labels are attached to numeric values, right? If we click on the word sophomore, we can see that Stata is reading this as a two. If we click on grad student, we can see that Stata is reading this as a six. Co-term is five, sophomore is two, and freshman is one. So what these are called in Stata is they're called value labels, um, where values of the variable year in school are labeled with words. And you can see that these value labels uh, are kind of nicely ordered and make sense intuitively. So that if one indicates that someone's a freshman, two indicates they're a sophomore, and so on. As we'll show in later parts of the workshop, um, it's really up to you or whoever is working with the data to assign these value labels. Um, so you can see that when I created this data set, I assigned them in a sort of chronological order. Similarly, if we turn our attention to this variable called F underscore C, which tells us whether someone's temperature measure was measured in Fahrenheit or Celsius, we can see that what we see as an F in blue, Stata understands as a 1, and what we see as a C, Stata understands as a 2. The final important component of data organization has to do with missing information. So in the survey that we sent out, not every person answered every question. And the way that Stata tells us that information is missing depends on the type of variable. With a string variable, which are here in red, missing information is just a blank cell, right? So there's no information that Stata is holding on to. And that tells us that this person, person number seven, is missing or didn't answer this question regions. They also didn't answer this question major. For numeric variables, Stata has a very specific way of storing missing information, which is with a dot. So here, what we see as a dot is also understood by Stata as a dot in both types of numeric variables. And this dot tells us that we are missing information on this variable. Right, so for person number eight, we're missing value for temperature. So hopefully this video gave you a sense of how data are organized and stored in Stata according to three different variable types and also how missing information is stored in Stata. We hope that this workshop was useful for you and that you'll continue on to part two, which will go over manipulating data with Stata.